Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Ken for Wednesday, April 14th, 2021. Brought to you by the great people at today's dentistry Call Dr. Mike O'Neill. He's the best dentist that there is. Make him your dentist. You can do that just by calling 317-849-2933. Take control of your dental health once and for all. Call the best. If you got a chance to hire the best, you hire the best. It's what you do. Hit uh, subscribe, hit like, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Very, very nice of you. Let's talk about sports. Uh, terrible news yesterday. Uh, let's be honest about it. It, it, it. The bad news is that Slick Leonard is gone. He's passed away at the age of 88. The good news is that he was here. Because him being here changed this city and changed this state forever. And the amount that it changed because of him cannot be overstated. Here's what Slick Leonard did and, and his wife, Nancy. They toppled over a bunch of dominoes that has led central Indiana to be what it is today. All right. Slick led the Pacers during the ABA era to three championships. The popularity of the Pacers during that period of time allowed it to migrate from the ABA to the NBA. Slick was the, uh, the coach of the ABA Pacers for its last eight years and for the NBA Pacers, its first four years. There were periods of economic turmoil within the franchise that Slick and Nancy helped pilot it through, including having a telethon that raised money so the team didn't have to fold. Because it didn't fold, here's what happened for the city of Indianapolis. The Pacers stayed here. Because the Pacers stayed here, the Colts came here from Baltimore. Because the Colts came here from Baltimore, there was more business, more growth downtown. For those of you who were around in the 80s, I wasn't. In the 90s, Indianapolis, there was nothing downtown. And it continued to grow and grow and grow bit by bit, in large part because of the Pacers, because of the Colts. The NCAA, as a result, moved here. Big events occurred here, uh, college basketball events in Indianapolis every single year from the time that the NCAA moved to Indianapolis. New buildings were built. Bankers Life Fieldhouse was built, the finest basketball arena in the country. Then Lucas Oil Stadium is built. Because of that, the Super Bowl comes here. Final Fours are here. This past year, the entire NCAA tournament was here. So what's happened is the downtown Indianapolis economy, and in large part, the state of Indiana's economy, is buffered by the money brought in through these sporting events and the other economic development that's gone on downtown because of sports in central Indiana. And because of that, ipso facto, there are people in Illinois who cannot wait to move to Indiana because of the lower taxes. As a result of that, real estate prices have gone up. Everybody in central Indiana is feeling very good about the value of their home and their economic future, in large part because Slick Leonard was here and started some of these dominoes toppling over. And beyond that, He's been an absolutely wonderful ambassador for Central Indiana and, and a tremendous broadcaster for Pacers basketball on the radio with Mark Boyle. Uh, Slick Leonard, if you ever met him, you felt like you were friends from the first time you met him. I saw that Michael Lewis, uh, Indiana Hoosier of great note, and now an assistant coach at UCLA, uh, mourned Slick's passing by saying that he's the only guy who's ever called him Mikey since he was a teenager. You know, that was Slick. Slick made you feel like you were friends, always, and and was very familiar and, and a wonderful, wonderful person. The only person I've ever been nervous to talk to on the radio, ever. I don't get nervous around people. I got nervous talking to Slick, because Slick is the kind of guy that you really want to have like you. And if he doesn't like you, what kind of a human being are you? You know what I mean? So I felt that way uh, about Slick Leonard. He was just a wonderful uh, Hoosier. He loved Indiana. He loved people from Indiana. He belonged to Indiana. And I think he embodied all of the traits of th that people from Indiana tend to kind of confer upon themselves and upon each other. 
I think Slick was was like the number one Hoosier of all time. Put a statue of him out in front of Bankers Life Fieldhouse and his wife Nancy because his wife Nancy was just as important to the development of the Pacers. Served as the uh, general manager of the Pacers, for goodness sake. At a time, like nobody even said anything. Nobody said, hey, look, it's the first female general manager of a major league sports franchise. Nobody said that back then, but it was true. And she did it way back when. She did it in the late 70s, for God's sake. Uh, Nancy Leonard, absolutely a treasure. And and our thoughts and prayers are with Nancy and and uh, Slick and Nancy's kids and grandkids. Uh, my goodness, what a loss for that family. Heard him on the radio this past weekend with Eddie White. Uh, anyway, um, speaking of Indiana, good news for the Hoosiers. Kind of weird news because we're not, not basketball news, but football news. A guy named Dan McCullough has committed to IU. He's from Bloomington South. His father is the running backs coach at Indiana. He is the first top 100 recruit in the history of the program. Highest ranked player recruit ever to commit to Indiana football. Good for Tom Allen and good for the Hoosiers. On uh, the, the lesser note, the kind of a sad note yesterday, Joey Brunk has decided he's going to transfer. He's going to play his final year of college basketball elsewhere. He's got the COVID exception year to play. And so he's not going to be at IU. I think everybody kind of assumed that he would be. He's not going to be. And and that's sad, I, I think. Uh, I, I like Joey Brunk a lot from the time he played high school basketball at Southport to the years he spent at Butler. A terrific guy to talk to and a really, really nice human being. His father passed away early during his tenure at Butler. Went to IU, played one year, and then was hurt this past year. I had a back problem. Hopefully that back heals up and he's able to enjoy basketball for his final year of college. Um, so Indiana has lost three to the transfer portal. Armand Franklin, Al Durham, and Joey Brunk. They've picked up three new guys, not all from the transfer portal, but Xavier Johnson from Pitt. He came via the transfer portal. Uh, Parker Stewart transferred from Tennessee Martin about mid-year last year. Never played for Indiana as he grieved the loss of his father. And then uh, Logan Duncan, who is a recruit, the final recruit of the Archie Miller era at Indiana. And so Logan Duncan's coming. Maybe Logan can kind of replace, at least uh, on paper, the uh, the absence can fill that role of, of Joey Brunk. He's a big from Cincinnati. He's going to come to Indiana. And, and so it's kind of three out, three in. That's the way it goes in college sports, man. You know, you keep some, you lose some, and that's the way it goes, especially during this time of COVID where kind of everything's thrown up in the air and, and you hope you can, you throw all the balls up and you catch as many as you can on their way down. That's kind of the way it works these days. Uh, the Pacers lost last night. They wilted in the fourth quarter, which is not unusual for this team, although they had won their last three. Uh, the Clippers just better defensively. The starters were 6 of 29 from beyond the arc. I think the Pacers overall were 9 of 40 from beyond the arc. you got to hit threes if you want to win in the NBA, especially when you're playing against Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, who was really good last night. Hey, I don't like him any more than you do, but he was really good. He had 36, 7, and 8 last night. So what are you going to do? Um, the NBA play-in tournament... So here's how the NBA playoffs are going to be a little bit different this year, and it makes no sense to me at all. None. Uh, the top 10 teams are going to go into the, uh, into the playoffs. The 7th and 8th seed are going to play one another in a one-game deal. The winner of that is going to become the 7th seed. Then the 9 and the 10th seed are going to play. The loser's going to be out. The winner is going to play the loser of the 7-8 game with the winner of that game advancing to become the eighth seed. Why? What, what are they doing? How does this make any sense? Mark Cuban's talking about it. Luka Doncic is talking about it. I get why they're talking about it, because it makes no sense to me whatsoever. What, why? Why are you playing more games? Why do we need the 10th best team in the Eastern Conference making the playoffs? 72-game regular season. All right, it's not like a 35-game regular season. Where, you know what, when the eighth and ninth seeds are so close, what are you going to, no. Just take the top eight and go. Let's go. And, and by the way, 
baseball. Watch baseball last night. Cubs, they win 3-2 to two over the Brewers. Good for the Cubs. It's unwatchable. It, it's terrible. Here's my fix. Nobody's talking about doing this. Lower the count. Three balls for a walk, two balls or two strikes for a strikeout. That's it. Let's get this thing moving. How many times do we have to see 0-2 counts become 3-2 counts because pitchers will not throw strikes? What are we doing, for God's sake? Matt Crenshaw, an alum of IUPUI basketball, named the head coach at IUPUI basketball. He had been an assistant coach at Ball State. He's coming to IUPUI. I like it. Hire alums. I dig it. Uh, Matt Crenshaw, good dude. Hopefully he's able to kind of figure out what Ron Hunter did before him and, and kind of pilot that, uh, that program towards success. There are a lot of kids in Marion County and the surrounding Collar Counties who can flat play basketball. You go recruit those guys. And, and that's really the way you become, I think, successful at IUPUI. And we've seen Jason Gardner do that to an extent and be successful at IUPUI. I think if Matt Crenshaw, if he kind of focuses his recruiting attention on Central Indiana, he's got a great chance to be successful. Let's celebrate some birthdays, shall we? Kevin Fetterman celebrating a birthday. That is not to be confused with that Featherline fellow who uh, was married to Britney Spears. Uh, to my knowledge, they're not re- related at all. Matthew Hawthorne, <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, Corey Loudon, happy birthday. Dave Tony and Philip Woodall. Happy birthday. If today's your birthday, you celebrate like hell. If it's not your birthday, you celebrate somebody else that's best done with an honest and specific compliment. Um, Please be good to each other. And in in the spirit of Slick Leonard, you know what? Be good. Hello, Brian Whitney. How are you? Be good to one another. Take good care of one another. Lift each other up like Slick did. Made you feel at home. Whether you were talking to him at Plum Creek or, or a, you know, a, a golf outing, or, or wherever you were at Banker's Life Fieldhouse, he always made you feel special. I can't tell you how many people yesterday and today sent me a little note on social media as we mourned the loss of Slick. They, they said, my goodness, every time we talked to him, it, it was like we were important to him. Everybody said that. He made everybody feel important. What a gift. To have this guy around for 88 years. Yesterday, I was immediately sad that Slick died. And then I was like, you know what? We had him for 88 years. That's a long, long time to have a guy like Slick Leonard around, leaving uh, the impression that he did both on the city, the area, and the people here as individuals, not just sports fans, but everybody. Slick was a treasure. And, and having him around for 88 years, thank God he was revived in 2011, right? He died 10 years and one month exactly from the time, uh, the date that he had that heart attack that could so easily have been fatal had he not been revived on the scene by medical staff from the Pacers. So uh, had him around for an extra 10 years and a month. That's all right. And and we're all better for it. And and that's good. Wait. People in Indiana are smart enough to understand when good people are around them and how they need to be treasured. And we did that with Slick. So uh, he led a great life. We should all be so lucky. You're exactly right, Brian. Exactly. So let's try to, let's try to emulate some of the lessons that he left us. Treat each other well. Can you, can you even imagine Slick Leonard yelling at someone? Treating them badly? Judging them negatively? I can't. So let's not. 